I will never spend my Bitcoin right now until it raises to where I think it needs to be. Remember that number, 100 million. I firmly bet my life that not in my lifetime, but maybe in my children's children's lifetime, that one Bitcoin, today that's worth 40,000, is gonna be worth about $100 million. So what do I do? I buy and stack for my kids. You can stack for your future. Good afternoon, good afternoon to each and every one of you. I am smiling because that was my class prom theme. <laughs> he just took me way back with that one. So good afternoon to everybody, and I, I guess I'll stop smiling. But we have the best engineer here at KBLA uh, Talk 1580, and so he does his thing every single day. But ladies and gentlemen, my name is Naja Roberts. And I am the host of Ahead of the Crypto Curve. And just really excited to be here today because I have my co-host that comes in on Monday. His hey, name hey. is Enrique. Right here. And Enrique is here today. And we are representing today the black and the brown. And so just super excited. He has some information that he's going to be sharing to, with you about some things that are happening in the brown, the com brown community. Uh, and I know we're all brown, but, <laughs> but we're, we're going to make Make this thing happen. We're going to make you all uh, really proud to be a part of what we are doing here. So, again, my name is Naja Roberts. This is Ahead of the Crypto Curve. And we are here today creating Satoshi Millionaires. One family at a time, one day at a time, one Satoshi at a time, and one Bitcoin at a time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, means you. And so I am super excited to be here today. Uh, back in Los Angeles, finally, after being on the road for just seven days. But it feels like I was gone a month. And the reason it felt like I was gone a month, because I was actually in five different states what? in seven days and uh, all about cryptocurrency. And I actually feel as though this last week, and I've been in crypto for a long time, I feel like last week was one of the most important parts of my cryptocurrency journey and um a lot of things went on i met a lot of great people and you know i shared some of the things while i was out on the road but in hindsight now that i'm home and just really reflecting on what a phenomenal week I had last week. I mean, you know, the most high is just absolutely awesome. He does everything perfectly, decently, and in order. And on Monday, I started out in Washington. Well, I started out in Baltimore. That's in Maryland. Um, and we got an opportunity to actually meet face-to-face -face with a young lady who is doing my business plan for the Bitcoin bank. And so she lives there in uh, Maryland. And so we flew into Maryland and we were able to really sit with her. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you that this is an incredible space. There's so many verticals. There's so many things that you can do. And you would think that I would have somebody writing my business plan for a Bitcoin bank that actually knows about Bitcoin. But no, it is not so. Uh, I got someone to write my business plan that I knew was capable of writing a great business plan. And at the same time, teaching her about Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space so that she can then uh, implement the things that need to be uh, the, the message that needs to be pushed out in my business plan. And so it's just, again, this opportunity, uh, no matter what you are doing, will ultimately lead you into this space and so I'm going to just say so that happened in, in Maryland and then we were in DC and as you all know we were at Capitol Hill and we heard from bro both the black and brown community about how important it is uh, for our politicians to understand that it's not just about Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency it's about the technology and the lives that it changes and the access that it gives our people that are not able to get of uh, in the monetary system the way that we want to. And so that whole event was incredible. And while I thought I would be tired of standing almost eight hours, like literally none of us even 
wanted to sit down because it was just so incredible. And so uh, one of the things that happened, and I'm always going to tell y'all the truth about everything. One of the things that did not happen. Now the event was phenomenal for those of us that were there and sharing all the things that we needed to share. We had all the speakers that came, everyone came out. I believe it was NBC. They came out and did some uh, interviews and things of that sort. But one of the biggest things that bothered me was none of, and I'm going to say none of our politicians even the ones that were in session the who promised that they were coming uh those that were because everybody was in session both senate and congress everybody was in session so there was no reason that they should not should not have come but they didn't and you know i'm not surprised it just is what it is of course they talk a good game and then they don't do the things that they need to do so i just want to share that not one of them showed up uh but also not one of our politicians showed up that was is going to get ready to go into office uh, and for whatever reason, you know, they're all of their staff and joint staffers, etc., made excuses for why they could not be there at that event. Uh, but we definitely uh, want to take note and let you all know that they did not show up. And they also, for whatever reason, put us on the lawn. Huh? Uh, we yes, they put us out on the lawn. So we had a permit for the West Steps, the West Steps of Capitol Hill. But they, when we got there, the organizer, now I wasn't the organizer, I was a participant uh, that really just helped get the folks out and, and get the speakers in place. I, I did the moderating of the event, which was very, very awesome. But they literally put us off the stairs. Then if you look at Capitol Hill, there's a pond, like a big mm. pond. They put us on the other side of the pond. And so I said, okay, so wait a minute. You mean to tell me that White folks can not only get on the steps, but break windows and get inside. Mm. And we get a permit and we can't even stand on the stairs. On the side lawn, basically. On the side lawn. They put us on the side lawn. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, that's just more of a reason for me to just, I got fire under my butt as it relates to what we're going to do in this space. Tearing down these walls. And we are going to tear this country financially we are going to tear this thing up because we are going to ensure that our black and brown community have what we need moving forward and so when i came back today i was fired up today i call this momentum monday and i know we got to go uh and 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 do a couple of commercials but when we come forward i'm going to finish talking about the week so we can just really share but ladies and gentlemen this is our time we we already know what we have and um just it's just an incredible it was an incredible week again probably one of the most influential weeks of my cryptocurrency life my bitcoin life and so with that ladies and gentlemen when we come forward on kbla talk 1580 we'll get more and looking forward to talking to you all all right all right and so we are here uh so the second thing that i wanted to share which was the next trip which wound up well, not trip, but the next couple of days we flew into Miami and it was just so awesome to see everyone. You know, when things are about to just explode for your community, for yourself, for your business, there's going to be obstacles that come in, in the way. And I just have to say, I know that every obstacle that we faced last week was because something miraculous, something spectacular is going to happen. And, you know, the enemy was just busy, busy, busy. We we missed a couple flights and flights were delayed and there was a tornado going across the south and it was just like ridiculousness. Two hour trip, uh, plane flight turned into four hours because they had to go a whole nother direction and just helped, you know, it missed. we missed our layovers and all those things happened, ladies and gentlemen. And so I'm just really uh, telling you all that some things are about to happen. It is about to explode for us. And so we just got to get in the right place and be in the right room. And I'm going to tell you, being on KBLA every single day, uh, listening in, whether you're listening here on KBLA, which I'm hoping you're doing every single day, or you're in, you know, some of the other places that we sit, uh, that you understand that you're in the right room. And getting in the right room is absolutely important. So we get to Miami. 
and things are not just going the way that we want. In fact, um, <laughs> we had so, some challenges. We did do our wine, women and crypto. We wound up doing it. You know, I'm always going to support. So we found a black restaurant um, called the House of Mac. And we had our wine, women and crypto there. And we got a chance to commune and break bread and eat the best macaroni and cheese. And, all right. and just all kind of stuff was, you know, they had lobster and mac. They just had some phenomenal food. So if you're ever in Miami, uh, go down there uh, to the House of Mac. That brother has some incredible stuff and some incredible lemonade. But I was saying that to say um, the the Bitcoin conference was and is the biggest Bitcoin conference in the world. Uh, and it was happening in Miami. And these folks swept across what we would call, you know, here in L.A. it would be like consider Watts and Compton. Mm. Like they came through the hood. Mm, yeah. They were in the hood <laughs> um, where it's not yet quite gentrified, but, you know, they're trying to do some stuff. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they came and brought all this money through uh, this area. It is called Overtown in Miami and Liberty City. And so they were everywhere with their Ferraris and, and all the other things that they were uh, you know, they were doing here at the conference, ladies and gentlemen. And so just to really see what they were doing in the community, uh, you know, they were walking and, and kind of enjoying themselves and not even really knowing where they were. Um, but people were starting to see in the Liberty City and the uh, Overtown area what cryptocurrency could possibly do for your life. And so, uh, you know, I talk with a couple of the business owners. What do you think? And they're like, with these people with cryptocurrency, like they have money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're absolutely correct. And you can, too. Just got to start learning about it and and get to know about it. And so our community really opening our eyes and ears to seeing this type of wealth just move through. And it wasn't people that were like, yeah, they have Ferraris, but they had holes in their pants, holes in their shoes, like they dress with t-shirts and just kind of like how I try to dress on purpose. And I say, try to dress, I do it intentional so that people are, you know, just understanding that having money right now in 2022 is not about what you're driving. It definitely can be about where you live, but not the outward appearance. It's just actually what's in that wallet. Yeah. What's in that wallet? Yeah. That's what this is about. What's in that wallet? Not what's about on your back or the gold or the jewelry that you're showing off. Like what's really in your wallet? That's what's about to count because this this recession is here. It's here. It's, it's here. So it's here, and it's gonna come a lot harder than we even think. And so uh, that was Miami, and so there were great things. And we're gonna ask our callers that are listening that were in Miami, maybe towards the end of the call, if they like to call in to eight hundred. 920-1580 again 800-920-1580 and you can tell us about your experience in Miami um you know you can share with us uh, again OBJ was there Odell Beckham Jr Serena Williams uh they were there to speak and so you know a lot of people got to catch that and our very own Lamar Wilson whoop whoop black bitcoin yeah. billionaires he was on stage uh and he did his talk as well and so we really want everybody to share it last but not least I went to the Rio hotel which was in uh, Las Vegas we spent Thursday and Friday or Friday and Saturday there I don't even know if I'm coming or going we were in so many places but uh, I believe it was Friday and Saturday and really just had an opportunity to, to talk to folks about what Bitcoin is uh, but I was really blessed to be on the stage with uh, some folks that were out of um, out of camps that they speak they and they make millions of dollars a year speaking and so it was an eye opener so those people that are in tony robbins camp i got an opportunity to take the stage with them and just to really see who they are and what they were doing and what their story is and to be able to be the last speaker like they actually had me as a headliner which tripped me out i think Um, they should i don't see a problem but they should but it tripped me out because i was like okay um, I'm here at this conference. I'm coming to teach about Bitcoin. But they were like, we need everybody to stay to the end. So if we give them the goods that you have, they're going to leave the conference. So we're putting you up last. And I was like, last. At last. I was Look like last. And I had to go behind the girl that's been speaking with and for Tony Robbins for like 32 years. And I was like, oh, my goodness. But you know what? It turned out well. The crowd was receptive. I could see initially, you know, some folks that didn't 
didn't believe in Bitcoin at all. You know, they looked like they had been sucking on the lemon when I first started. And then when I got done, they were asking questions and everybody was, you know, after gathering saying, hey, you know what? I need to talk to you. I want you to talk to my group type of thing. So I think it was really, really an incredible week. And again, I am forever grateful. And then this morning, ladies and gentlemen, was the sum up of my week. My son is on the road right now, him and all of his belongings. He is driving in his excursion. He is headed to Texas to start his life as a Bitcoin miner today. Nice. So I am a proud parent of a Bitcoin miner. (laughs) He is on his way to Texas, and I think the job is incredible. And I've always preached to my children about being entrepreneurs. Um. And I, I I raised them that they weren't going to work for somebody. They were going to be their own bosses. And and they've done that. My son is 27 years old. He Other than the Navy, like he really never had a real technical job. So this is his first technically having, you know, time having an actual job. But to know that he's in good hands. And I'm going to say that. So. To me, this wasn't like taking a job because the people that he's going to work with are 100 percent Bitcoin. They understand the technology. He's about to go learn the technology. He's about to learn how everything is created, how things are done, how the space is run. And I could never. Uh, I, I I did a video today. Like, I'm super excited. Nadia, that's some this. real uh, generational wealth right there. You're helping your son. You know, yes. become more than he could have ever thought he could have been. Seriously, you guys yeah. are that's amazing. Yeah, so I, I'm super excited about that. And uh, again, today being my Momentum Monday day, I, I I did a video with my son, and just to let him know that I'm proud of him. And you know, it's not it's, it's this this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I think uh, for him. And definitely for all of us in this space, no matter what it is we're doing, whether it's being on this radio show, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity because nobody else is doing it. This is like the first of the first of the first, especially in our community. Now, somebody may be doing it in other communities. I'm not even aware of it. I think everybody's just doing regular podcasts, but to be on a nationally syndicated show is, is awesome. And so whatever you do, whatever you feel like doing in this space, there is room for you. And I wanted to share that, but this is, and has been the best year of my, the best week of my crypto life. And so I'm smiling from ear to ear. And and as that song Miles put on said, when we got started, make it last forever. Cause I wanted to make <laughs> this week last forever, but I just had to, to bounce around the country and do what needed to be done. Um, and so for that, I am just grateful. And then tomorrow night, this is the last thing I'm going to say tomorrow night. I fly out to New York. Uh, We are officially able to announce that we are going to be uh, working with Cash App. Nice. And we are going to be working with Jay-Z. And we're going to meet the Sean Carter Foundation uh, tomorrow. Well, on Wednesday in New York for a project that we're doing there in New York. And I'm super excited about it. I'm going to let uh, Jack Dorsey and Jay-Z make the official announcement. But for those of you that are in the New York area, it is going down. We will be doing some stuff in the New York area that I'm super excited about. And um, we're coming in to educate the community. And so I'm excited. So my husband and I fly out tomorrow night. We'll stay all day Wednesday. Then we'll be back on a flight coming back home because we got some work to do. We got this digital financial revolution tour coming super excited about that it's just like this world is on fire not this girl is on fire this 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 bitcoin space is on fire ladies and gentlemen if you did not know you should know and so uh there's just some incredible things happening before enrique goes on to share with you what's happening around the world i do want to say that there was a 60 minute special that just happened Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, cryptocurrency, as they called it. And and again, somebody uh, said today I was a little bit offended because cryptocurrency is not Bitcoin. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's it's not. It's not Bitcoin. So let's not get it twisted. But 60 Minutes did a special on cryptocurrency. 
Uh, and I want to give my hat to Jack Muller, tip my hat to Jack Muller uh, for what he's doing to bring awareness. And we were having a discussion a little bit earlier today about why these rich people, and I'm going to say these rich people, are talking, calling Bitcoin rat poison and mm. and how they're trying to keep mm. Bitcoin away from our communities. Mm -hmm. And someone said, you know, nobody can keep Bitcoin from you. And they really can't because you can buy it and you can store it and you can do all the things that you needed to do. But I said to them, do you know how they keep Bitcoin from our community? It's not physically, it's mentally. Because exactly. we look to people like Warren Buffett who's who's this billionaire and we look to him for financial advice and we look to him but i bet my last dollar that he has some bitcoin i i exactly and he's and he's saying one thing and doing another he's speaking from both sides of his neck now, speaking from both sides of his neck or or his backside or we don't use that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but you know he is, and so with Jack Muller doing this on sixty minutes, ladies and gentlemen, people's eyes are starting to open up and saying, "Well, wait a minute, the president just did an executive order. These countries are adopting Bitcoin, and here it is. Sixty Minutes is talking about it. You can go to CNBC; they now have a crypto channel." Like all these things are starting to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please wake up and get off the sidelines. We're here for the black and brown community to get going. If you have questions, we're here to answer. We got answers. And if we don't have answers, we'll find the answers for you. But just know this is here. It's here to stay. It's going down. And uh, did you want to say something about the 60-minute special before you go into your stuff after traffic and news? I mean, you know, it's just amazing to think that a whole country is now adopting cryptocurrency. If you would have told me that 10 years ago, I would have told you, I'm not sure. You know what I mean? I think Bitcoin is only like four grand right now. Maybe when it's at 40. Oh, it is right now. That's right. We're around there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also talked about, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that Bitcoin price based on his historical things and based on some of the numbers, Bitcoin may be taking a dump. But we don't care because we know what the technology holds. And we also understand that when Bitcoin takes a dump, even a small dump of $5,000, $2,500, it's on sale. And that's when we need to be stacking more Satoshis. So what we are excited about, ladies and gentlemen, is making sure that our community has the best information. And when we come back after traffic and news... When we come forward after traffic and news, we are going to get some real good information that Enrique is going to share with us uh, that is happening in the Brown community so that you can understand what adoption is happening and how quickly this is going to spread in other countries, even if it doesn't spread as quick as we want here in the United States. So with that, this is KBLA Talk 1580. All right. And this is ahead of the crypto curve and i'm your host naja roberts and my co-host today is mr enrique hey 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 so enrique has some information that he's going to share and we're going to have a little chat about it so enrique take it away so now i wanted to talk about you know what people do not what they say right mm -hmm. so you've got a lot of these really rich families saying oh well you know that whole bitcoin thing it, it, it's just a fad uh, we might see it be gone in a few years but what are they actually doing? Well, I want to talk about the third richest man in Mexico. His name is Ricardo Salinas Pliego. Okay. Now, he's actually from the richest family in Mexico. Wow. Carlos Slim is the richest man, but this guy has the richest family. Okay. So now, he actually put out that he is going to take 60% of his family's liquid assets and buy Bitcoin with it. Wow. Within the next coming year. Wow. So... How is that possible? Now, help me understand why Mexico says you cannot just jump into cryptocurrency without their permission, but yet this guy is buying up all of these crypto businesses and moving his money into Bitcoin itself. Wow. So now, this family has been around since 1905. Okay. So making furniture, making electronics, 
they pretty much run the entirety of Mexico. So what they're trying to do is set it up so that they themselves are going to be able to run their own, quote unquote, bank, crypto bank okay. that they're going to be able to to run <laughs> However they see fit, since essentially if you got enough money, you can kind of do whatever you want there. Right. Um, the reason I mention this, guys, is because do not be fooled. Do not let people tell you, oh, it's a scam or it'll be gone next week. This is just my personal opinion. But as Bitcoin grows, those voices are going to become louder. And I promise you that there is something going on behind them getting them to say that, especially as we start to see inflation. And we're already starting to see a little bit of it. Ted Cruz, right? I don't like claiming him because he's a, he's a Canadian Cuban as far as I understand, right? <laughs> but, you know, hey, it is what it is. No one's perfect, right? right. <laughs> now, Ted Cruz actually made a bill that he introduced. And I, I want to quote it correctly, right? U.S. Senator Cruz introduces a bill to prevent Federal Reserve from using digital currency as a surveillance tool. Now, what's really going on here, right? They don't want to allow people... They don't want to allow the government to be able to track you through your transactions like China does, right? But they also don't want to make it that the Federal Reserve has their own cryptocurrency, according to this bill, because they don't want the value of the dollar to keep dropping. I think they're starting to see a little bit of that writing on the wall that what's going to happen the day people go, you know what? I'd rather take Bitcoin than the dollar. Hmm. What kind of questions and what kind of politics are we going to, are we going to get into when people like us, like me and you, start making those kind of choices and those kind of questions? Yes. What do you think, Naja? Well, I think that I, I believe the writing is already on the wall mm -hmm. because the more influencers that come out and say, hey, I'm taking half of my NFL salary in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And then you have situations that happen where like OBJ, they were saying, oh, my God, he's a stupid. He's stupid. Like everybody has been silenced now because, yes, Bitcoin dropped just a tad bit and it was on sale. Now it's back where it was right around the time that he accepted some of his big, his, his, his NFL salary in Bitcoin. Cause you know, the people don't even understand how that actually gets divvied out, but uh, he was very smart because the way that the NFL gets, gets their, their salaries is almost like dollar cost averaging. If he was going to get his salary in, in Bitcoin, I think it's just absolutely brilliant, but they know that now and they shut their mouths. Cause last week he was on stage telling mm -hmm exactly what that looked like and for those that didn't catch it they will because you know they're gonna more and more people are gonna start saying you know what i want to accept bitcoin and not the u.s dollar and they're really afraid of that and i think that that is the biggest reason why you know our politicians are kind of taken aback because they have to stand for what they've always known mm -hmm. people a lot of people are afraid to change Period. Yeah. No matter what it is, yeah. people are afraid of change. But the change that has to be made right now is a monetary system change. And that is going to shake this world up. It's going to shake it upside down. So I'm excited about. Now, you people. know, yeah. in, in the same article, this guy, uh, Salinas, he talks about how he actually went through inflation because when he was a, a, a you know younger man, he was making what would be the equivalent of about two thousand a month, and a year later he was making about twenty dollars a month. Wow! Now I actually experienced this because when I went to go visit family in Mexico in the eighties, I remember my mom would give me like fifty dollars, sixty dollars for the whole summer, uh -huh. right? And you know, I'd buy a little stuff, some candy, you know, a few things with it throughout the summer. But by five years later, when we went to go visit, my fifty dollars, I bought a bicycle with it. I bought like candy for all my friends and my cousins and everybody else. I I didn't. The, the value of the dollar was so high compared to to the peso. Right. That can happen here too. Right. Don't don't think it can. We're not special. Yeah, definitely not special. And so you know when we look at when we look at uh, just the value of the dollar. And again, I say this every time I speak because in our communities, people are like, the dollar's not broke. Why fix it? Like, why is there a need for this Bitcoin stuff? The dollar works just fine. Well, what if this freaking dollar doesn't work just fine mm -hmm. in about five years? Like, mm -hmm. what if? What are you going to do? Oh, well, that'll never happen. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you were never going to be locked in your house for two years either, were exactly. you? Exactly. <laughs> and that'll never happen. You'll never be able to get from 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 San Fernando Valley to downtown L.A. in 10 minutes. That'll <laughs> never happen. But it happened during COVID because the freeways were empty. I did that trip just for fun. I just want to oh, say that part out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I, did it, I did it on purpose, too. And that's why when we came back off COVID, people were driving 95, 100 miles an hour mm-hmm. because the freeway was but guess what people said it would never happen it would never happen but i knew uh, actually from being in this cryptocurrency space and some of the people that i've come in contact with that a shutdown and a lockdown was getting ready to transpire and it came out of being in crypto because we're paying so close attention to the monetary system that we can tell which way stuff is going and i'm going to tell you case in point when America's money starts to get affected and they're like, okay, we're shutting this down, when that's where their cash cow is or where their bread and butter comes from, we know that something is taking place. And this is no different, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing the loss of some of the value of the U.S. dollar, and it is going to be really critically important that we pay attention to what's happening and what the signs are and what's happening when we go to the grocery store and what, you know, what products and services are looking like. And I'm going to share with you about some plane tickets when we come forward, when we come forward, we're going to, I'm going to talk about inflation because y'all think these gas prices are bad. I'm going to share with you what our ticket to New York costs tomorrow night. When we come forward, this is KBLA Talk 1580. All right, so I told you all I was going to share what inflation is doing to us. Uh, we were we had this trip. We absolutely have to take and be in New York on Wednesday because we're meeting with Sean Carter Foundation and um, probably Rock Nation. Um, and our tickets, ladies and gentlemen, were $3,800 a piece. And when I got on to delta this morning because they're reimbursing me so just let's just keep it out there uh when i got on the delta this morning i said you know what there's no way in the world they're selling all these tickets and the the flight leaves out tomorrow so i went back on and they had dropped the price by about a thousand dollars but that's it so i called delta said look i just bought these tickets on sunday and this was the price and i need you all to give me a refund i need this thousand dollar difference we did we were able to recoup that thousand but just to know that that this is ridiculousness like how is anybody going to ever be able to do anything as far as like traveling and visiting family all the coach seats were sold out but even coach was fifteen hundred dollars to go from LAX to New York and we're doing a red eye and some you know some of the things that we we have to do that because you know uh, one of the other things I want to tell anybody that's traveling, because I don't know that anybody's talking about traveling on any of our KBLA shows, just understand that they are canceling flights left and right. They are they're doing so much shenanigans right now in the air, ladies and gentlemen. It was a ridiculous week for our flights. I said we were on seven flights, two of which which we missed. One was because of a one was because of a, a layover that was late and it just it's just terrible. But they're doing this all across the board. All the people that I talked to that had traveled to Miami had serious problems getting back home. They're blaming it on the weather. Worker the, shortage. Worker the shortage. Mm-hmm. They're not giving you your your snacks on the planes. I, it just was like ridiculous stuff. It's like you, you drinks there we're we're discontinuing services today just like for what 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 reason they're just like oh we're not doing it today like how is that? i choose not to <laughs> like i choose not to. i was just like what kind of mess is this and so literally we flew almost every airline this this because i had to even cancel a flight and go with a different airline because it was ridiculous and so ladies and gentlemen all of these things that we're talking about in a recession affect us in some sort of way and 
and I'm going to tell you that it's affecting us in the plane, uh, in the in the airplane industry as well. They're they're getting really hit hard by the price of these gas prices. And again, you know, as much as we like to run around here with no mask, like COVID is still happening yeah. and uh, people are still getting sick. And, and one of the sponsors that I have uh, that I'm supposed to have been talking to last week is sick with COVID, like one of the major uh, sponsors. And so, you know, it is what it is. There was a group in, in Las Vegas performing and they're telling everybody they're COVID positive. Oh, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but they came anyway because they had like three days of sold out shows. Uh, but something that I'm noticing again in the financial services industry, one of the things that I'm noticing family and friends, loved ones, is that people are still eating. They're eating out everywhere and they're still entertaining themselves. And so when we look at saving money right now is this really the time to be eating out is this really the time to be entertaining ourselves with these concerts and yes i know you want to get out i know you were in the house for two years i know you didn't get to visit family and friends but is right now time to be allowing people to extract money from your bank accounts and the answer is no bring the money in bring the money in and put it in bitcoin like mm-hmm. I'm doing. I'm mm-hmm. going to say like I'm doing because I'm not a financial advisor. Or whatever advisor. investment you think is correct for you. Yes. But put it into something. Let something. the money work for you. Let the money work for you and not you work for the money. And so, um, but inflation is here. Uh, this recession is here. It may not have hit your household yet, uh, but it definitely is no way in the world I'd have been going to New York uh, at $3,000 a seat. 3000 plus a seat. But what we, you know, we, we're doing this for work and there's a, a bigger picture than what we're doing. So we're excited about that. And when we come forward, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do our dollar cost averaging a day. And um, if anybody wants to call in really quickly, we are taking phone calls at 1 800 920 1580. Just share any little information. Again, that number is 800 920 1580. And this is KBLA Talk 1580. All right, this is the head of the crypto curve. And I'm going to say this very quickly. We are going to dollar cost average. A dollar cost average a day keeps poverty away. And if you say you don't have enough money to dollar cost average, what can we, what can they do, Enrique? Well, do you got anything around the house you might not need? Well, go on Binks.com and sell your stuff for Bitcoin. Spell it out. B-I-N-K-X dot com. Sell your stuff for Bitcoin. All right. And that's what we're going to do. And and you can find us on social media and get that information. We have a caller that's calling in. His name is Ryan. We call him Young Malcolm in the cryptocurrency space. And so what's going on, Ryan? Not that much, not that much. I just want to say... Peace and blessings to you as well as to all of the listeners. I know for people out there, the price of various asset classes is dropping. Remember the reason why you got in, and hopefully the goal is more long-term. And anytime you get bored with price, always remember to focus on the protocol, especially if you are in the crypto space. With that being said, shout out to Enrique as well and to your company for people that have additional things that they don't need. Springtime is coming. Clean up, clean out, um, and just get involved. Back to you, Ms. Nazi. Well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about what you enjoy most about the Bitcoin 2022 conference, if you will, real quick. Yes. Uh, being around black people that I had you know, been talking to online on various platforms and texting and things, just being able to see them in real life, as well as listen to some of the speakers that were there. There's a lot of development that is happening in the Bitcoin space. And again, price wasn't the focus. It was the focus on the growth and truly having an alternative, whereas we get to be self-sovereign, we get to take control, and most importantly, just being around great people. So that was that was the main thing. And, of course, meeting you again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And look forward to seeing you in New York the day after tomorrow. So I'm um, looking forward to that venture as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an important and exciting time to be alive. We have options. Our community, you know, my grandfather, before he passed, he used to say, you know, the bottom rail is going to be, the Bible says, the bottom rail is going to be on the top. And he used to always say that. And so I'm excited that I'm living in a time where the bottom rail 
is going to be on the top. And uh, we're going to make this happen for our community. So thank you, Ryan, for that. And thank you, Enrique, for sharing. And, you know, together we come together to make sure that our community has the best education and we know how to move in this space. We know how to keep each other safe and we know how to keep each other informed. And so that's what we're doing. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, please do not forget today to dollar cost average. If you can't dollar cost average six dollars a day, do six dollars a week. If you can't do $6 a week, do $6 a month. And if you can't do that, find something in your house and go to Binks, B-I-N-K-X dot com and sell it and get yourself some Bitcoin because we have to stack these Satoshis. The time is coming and Ryan was talking about it. I'm going to ask him to come back tomorrow to really talk about what he was sharing about this morning. We were talking about the difference between gold and Bitcoin, not necessarily the difference, but what's going to happen when Bitcoin has its halving period and what gold is going to look like and how it may or may not outperform gold. So maybe tomorrow's show, uh, we can have you come back on, Ryan, and share that information because I thought it was very pointed and I think that we really need to start to understand uh, what is transpiring with all the different asset classes. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, please dollar cost average today. Open up your Black Wall Street wallet. Click on that purple circle. Click it. Click buy Bitcoin. Hit one time. Do $6, and voila, you will have $6 worth of Satoshi. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we make way for the D.L. Hughley Show, I want to say to you all, thank you for joining us and continue to stay ahead of this crypto curve. It's your girl, Naja Roberts, and her co-host, Enrique. And Enrique Alameda and Almeida, Almeida. Yeah. Almeida. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you. This is KBLA Talk 1580.